Hi, I'm Leo Sidrin, and I have a podcast called The Third Story. Here's an excerpt from my conversation with writer Emma Straub. You can subscribe at third-story.com. Really, I think that the thing that I'm most grateful to my father for is showing me that writing, well, of course, it is an art. It is something that comes from deep inside you and like... It is meaningful and mysterious and all of that, even though it is that, it is also a job mm -hmm. that you can choose to do and that you can treat like any other job. So you have to do it every day and you have to go to your place and sit down and be really dedicated. There's no waiting for the muse. Mm -hmm. You can't wait to be inspired to write because... That's for amateurs. Like real writers understand that you have to work at it and you have to sit down and do it even if maybe you don't feel like it or maybe you don't feel like the lightning bolt has just appeared over your head. But I think it certainly helps if you have some kind of predisposition. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I don't I think anyone who really wanted to be a writer could be a writer. I think that you know, there are lots of different writers needed in the world. There are lots of di different books needed in the world. Your understanding of the business of books is maybe as informed by your experience of working as a bookseller oh, as yeah. it is growing up the child of a writer. Absolutely. You know, I was a child in the 80s when my dad had lots of huge bestsellers. And so my understanding of publishing was very skewed. With my dad, I understood that he worked really hard by himself for a long time, and then, boop, he sent off a book, and then he worked on it with the editor, and then, boop, then it went off into the world, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Like, it, his his job ended, like, publication day. But then, when I started working at the bookstore, I suddenly had a much deeper understanding of the the whole ecosystem, because at a bookstore, of course the job starts when the, the galleys arrive, right? The, the, the advanced copies arrive and the booksellers maybe read them, maybe they don't read them. Maybe they get excited about them and talk about them on Twitter. Maybe you take a picture of it and put it on Instagram. All that stuff suddenly matters. But that's for contemporary. Now, I think because it's a smaller field, you know, you've got Amazon on the one hand and you've got Barnes & Noble and then you've got all these indies. It's really important for the writer to stay involved after the book comes out now. And social media becomes that way that you can connect. Yeah. And what about finding your voice? How does one go about finding their voice? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, by writing a lot. By writing a lot. I think when I was younger, I, I, I tried to control it too much. And that messed things up for me. You know, and when I stopped worrying about that so much, I realized like, oh, like this actually sort of sounds more like me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the things that you care about will be in your fiction and the things that you worry about will be in your fiction and you know you're not putting on like a hazmat suit and like <laughs> right. going into right. some totally foreign territory like no but it's a kind of a funny contradiction between effortlessness but then also enormous work yeah and that's like that's basically life. that's, that's life, life of an artist right it might not come out right the first time but like if i work on it and revise it and like really play with it and think about it then it should sound totally perfect and like you haven't spent hours working on it. You know, that's, that's the goal. If you like what you heard, sign up at third-story.com. You can hear all of the other episodes and subscribe.